Right. Two nuts. Big ones. And a locking tab between the centre. A little pin. There's a little pin that goes down the centre that slots into the um, centre part of the hub. Clean it up in a second and have a look. It's missing on this one. So uh, that'll want a new locking ring. Right, ready. Hub and disc, off we go. As you pull it off carefully, I've not messed, I've not taken anything else off. When you pull it off, if you're just changing your brake disc, because you have to do this to change your brake disc as well. Take the bearing out the front, I'll leave that resting on there for a minute. There is a spacer. And you can see on that one, hopefully, the little tag that sits down. Locating tag, that's what's missing from that one. There's one bit of bearing, lovely. Loads of rag ready to catch all, your, all the muck that's gonna come out of it. One Land Rover hub and disc. explain a couple of details on the go from there. Clean a few bits and bobs up and now I've got a couple of bits out of the package to show you. That's the seal that goes in the back of the hub. That would go on first and it seals on this ring which is why I'm standing here showing you this. There's a collar on the back of the stub. All Land Rovers have got them. Early series ones, uh, twos and threes as far as I know yet. Um, that collar is about five quid, eight quid and you can <coughs> put a chisel in there, bang and chase it off. You only need to do that if you're um, where the oil seal runs on it, which is over there like that, is if it's grooved, worn. Yeah, come and have a close look. Grooved, worn, or uh, rusty. It's okay on this one. It's not been wading or anything. And it looks like that is part of the um, bigger, uh, bigger flange on this one cover that more when we do the axle DVD, I'll show you how to change the <coughs> swivel housings and the oil seals and the drive shafts and all that. Now we are doing the uh, wheel bearings, so have a look at these. That's a wheel bearing track and that is a wheel bearing, tapered bearing because it's, it's on, a, on a wedge. So the tighter you tighten your wheel bearings, the more pressure is on those. That's why it's important not to over tighten them. Uh, that's the new one. That one sits in the front. Already left it on the floor over there. That's where the seal sits. And that seal is loosely holding the back bearing in. <coughs> so what we do is with our hammer and chisel, stick it in the front. Give it a whack. <coughs> and then out it comes. Here's the old bearing and seal, we know what they look like, so I've just showed you the new ones. In here is the track, which we have to knock out. And I'll clean it up properly so we can have a proper look. <coughs> but while we're here, changing a disc, one, two, three, four, five bolts. They're um, 12, uh, 12 point bolts. Gun on the back if you're lucky enough to have an air gun. If not, put it on the floor. Put your bar in between the um, sockets the same way uh, I showed you to undo in them bolts. Put the bar in there, put it on the floor, and then crack them all off. And then you can knock, knock the disc, which is this bit here, off the back of the hub. Put your disc on if you're changing your discs and pads. That's that explained. We'll be covering the DVD on the brakes as well. Don't forget to have a look at the website, Spanish4x4expedition.com and LandRoverWorkshopDVD.com and DIY-DVDs.com Loads more stuff on there. Go and have a look. We're going to do a bit of a project on this one like we did the miner. Uh, I'll go and clean it up um, so it's nice and spotless for us to show uh, putting, changing the tracks. Right, okay, I've cleaned it up a bit and now we're knocking these out. There he is, there. And they sit in the hub. Oh, if you're doing it, uh, obviously the purpose of my DVD is to show you how little you need to do them. <coughs> if you're doing it out in, outside on the floor in the mud, rest the hub on your wheel, 
You can turn it out both ways and drop the studs in the holes if you need something to hold it still. Because um, you don't want to buckle, don't want to walk the disc. Okay, chisel. Just a nice flat side. Catch it, you can see the, um, have a look down there. You can see the back edge of the track. You catch the chisel on the back edge of the track. Give it a clump. Try and keep my head out of the way, which I've already smashed on the bottom of the Land Rover and it's bleeding and giving me an headache. Just chase it round. You can see the gap opening up. I don't know if you can see it on camera, but um, it is going. And there you go. Oh, it smells a bit as well. That's it. It's not too bad a condition, that wheel bearing. Acceptable. Right, same for the other track. <clears throat> spin, the, spin the hub over, knock the back, knock the front track out. I'll just show you doing one, otherwise we'd be here forever. Put the tracks in with the smaller hole, the fat edge, down. And you can use the old one as a drift, because when you're knocking it in, you mustn't scratch the surface, that area there, with your chisel, because you'll make the wheel bearing noisy. I've got presses here, I've got proper uh, wheel bearing drifts, but um, this DVD is for people who don't have everything. And when you, to get that in, don't just smack one side in, chase it around, it needs to go in level. So it's just a case of chasing it in. And using the old track, you won't um, <clears throat> you won't uh, burr it up. But when you get to the last stage, I'll just explain it quickly. Guys, make my eyes water now. My head's properly. When you get to the last stage, if you keep banging it in, you will you will wedge the old track in the hub as well because it's, it goes down a little bit further than the um, the track width. So it can be done. Do it with your um, you do it with the same chisel. Make sure it's got a good edge on it because you don't want it slipping off. And then catch it on the edge of the uh, track. Like, like so. Can you see that? And keep it pulled to the edge of the hub. Nice, firm. Take your time because you don't want any damage to the track. Can you see that? That is the um, that is the lip that you don't want to get the um, the old track that you're chasing it in with caught on, and it has got to go about another millimetre. If you look down there. <clears throat> I don't know if you can see it. Is there enough light in there? It should be. You can see the back edge of the track. It's got to, got to be flush with this lip that it sits on. Right, so that's that. I won't, won't film any more of that. I'm giving you all the tips I can think about. Good chisel for that one so it doesn't slip off as you're tapping it in. Same with the front one, the front one's nice and easy to do because it's closer to the edge. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> two new tracks and then we'll come back and put it back on the car. Back in a second.